It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon in Philadelphia, PA. Last night, the D-backs tied a franchise record with six home runs and a 10-2 win. Back today, hoping to make it a pitcher's park with Zach Greinke on the mound. It's D-backs baseball on Fox Sports Arizona. Good afternoon from Citizens Bank Park and welcome to the broadcast. Steve Berthune, Bob Brenly along the way. The D-backs and the Phillies, the second of a four-game series. And Bob, today, Zach Greinke goes for a seventh straight win. Yeah, 6-0 and oh over his last six starts with an ERA barely over two. He has been commanding all of his pitches, all quadrants of the strike zone, and facing a very undermanned Phillies offense. This should be a good one for Zach today. What's been working so well for him lately? Well, it all starts with fastball command. That's something he did not have his first couple starts of the year when his ERA was hovering around 10, but as he gained command of that fastball, it sets up all of his secondary pitches. Granky on the mound. The D-backs look to make it two in a row over the Phillies. Jared Eikhoff, the right-hander, on the mound for the Phillies. First pitch coming up on Fox Sports Arizona. Diamondbacks baseball on Fox Sports Arizona is brought to you by CenturyLink. Switch to CenturyLink Prism TV for an advanced TV experience. Learn more at cprismtv.com. Buy Jack in the Box. Taste the all-new Double Jack Burger today only at Jack in the Box. Buy Oregano. Step up to the plate for a guaranteed home run at Oregano, your neighborhood pizza joint, location statewide. And buy your Valley Honda dealers, where you get more standard features for less money. is brought to you by Lone Butte Casino. Get in on big wins. By Mattress Firm, save money, sleep happy. And by Gigablast, 100 times more powerful internet from Cox. Bring on tomorrow. Well, we know it's hot back home. Hang in. It's a beautiful Saturday afternoon here in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Citizens Bank Park, Steve Berthune, Bob Brindley, Todd Walsh along the way. 
The second of a four game series here, the D-backs and the Phillies, as Arizona today will try and make it two in a row over the Phillies. No David Peralta in the lineup today. David showed up at the ballpark yesterday with a sore back, and Chip Hale said it came from sleeping in too late on the off day Thursday. Not serious, but it flared up a bit. And as frustrated as David is, he'll have to sit out again today. Maybe he'll be back in there tomorrow. We'll see. Yeah, it'd be nice to get David back in the lineup and have a lefty in there to balance out this right handed heavy lineup. But here's how Chip Hale will line him up today. Gene Segura at second base leading off once again. Michael Bourne in center field. Paul Goldschmidt at first base. Jake Lamb moves up to the four spot. He'll be playing third. Peter O'Brien two long home runs in the ball game last night out in left field. Welling Castillo once again doing the catching. Asmani Tomas with a couple of long balls of his own last night. He'll be out in right field with Zach Greinke, the pitcher, batting eighth, and Nick Ahmed, the shortstop, batting ninth. And on the mound for the Phillies, your Arizona Ford starting pitcher. It's Jared Eikhoff, 25 year old right hander. This is the guy who Chip Hale says is probably the Phillies' best pitcher. He's a big dude out there, 6'4, 245, a pretty solid 3 4 0 ERA, and a guy, Bob, who we are told might have one of the best curveballs in the league. Yeah, good curveball, good slider, a lot of breaking pitches from Ikoff if he follows the pattern. His last two games started against the Cubs and the Blue Jays, two of the better offensive teams in Major League Baseball. He went a total of 13 innings, gave up only five hits and one run against the Cubs and the Blue Jays, struck out 13. Our eye on defense for Philadelphia is sponsored by Nationwide Vision Centers. Cody Ashey in left, Odubel Herrera in center, and Jimmy Paredes in left or right field rather. Michael Franco at third base, Freddie Galvis at short, Andres Blanco at second base, and big Ryan Howard in the lineup. Got a nice round of applause from the crowd here at Citizens Bank Park. Chuch Ruiz doing the catching, and the right-hander Jared Eikhoff on the mound. Yeah, things have gotten so ugly for the Phillies lately, and especially last night. Seems like Pete McCannon got as many different guys in there today. <laughs> As he could before our first pitch, it's time for your Valley Honda dealers. Key to the game. Well, we got a trading places theme today. Winthorpe versus Valentine. Uh, I cough with a nice ERA of his own at 3.40. Zach Granke at 3.75. We're going to see if those two guys can trade here today. Trading places. Billy Ray Valentine, Capricorn. <laughs> <laughs> Laz Diaz is behind the plate. He'll have the balls and strikes. Gene Segura leads it off, and we are set to go on a lovely Saturday afternoon in Philadelphia, PA. And there's strike one. Segura 303 and five homers. He singled last night. Gene has hit safely in seven of his last eight games. There is the now requisite pitch up and into Gene Segura. Every ball game he gets one of those. Drives that into center field. Another base hit. Just like last night, Segura leads it off with a single. That's the best revenge for getting knocked down on the previous pitch. Just line one into center field for a base hit. Immediately put Eikhoff into that stretch position. And again, no David Peralta against the right hander today. He's out with that bad back. So Michael Bourne in there again in center field. 265 at a homer. Michael Franco creeping in just a step or two from third base. They'll keep Segura close. Michael Bourne had a pair of hits last night. He also scored a run and dropped down just an absolutely gorgeous bun single to the first base side against the lefty Adam Morgan in that ball game. Michael Bourne has always hit well in this ballpark. 89 career games, 309 average. Phillies, the team that drafted Michael Bourne, a fourth round pick back in 03. Missed inside, 1 0. And Michael continues to contribute. He's hit safely now in five of his last six, and 333 in his last 10 road games. Segura takes off and Bourne hits it right back to Eikhoff who does a nice job and they turn two. Very well done by the Phillies pitcher Jared Eikhoff. 
do it much better than that. I call throwing on the move as he goes to his left to field that ball. Fires on to Galvis for the out at second base. Back to Ryan Howard to complete the double play. Pretty nice play by the big right hander. So he was in a bit of a jam. Now he's got two outs on five pitches and a work to Paul Goldschmidt. Are you feeling it today, partner? No, nah, I'm not. I'm <laughs> stopping at one. <laughs> 288 and 13 home runs. Part of that OPS number you just saw for Goldie is on base percentage. He now leads all of Major League Baseball with a 426 OBP. And you are to be congratulated for not only stepping up and making good on the Tony Luke's bet last night, but you actually were cooking. Hey. Tony Luke's. We'll have video of that later in our broadcast. All you from, really stepped up big time. All from my experience in the Boy Scouts. I'm used to standing over a griddle and flipping eggs. But you got in there, you put the whole uh, yeah. all the accoutrement wear and the apron and the shirt and the gloves and the whole thing. Our buddy Steve out there at Tony Luke's, uh, he was a good host, told me exactly what to do and how to do it, and then just stepped back and let me do my thing. That was fun. <laughs> well, we went out there and collected this morning. <laughs> we'll show you some pictures of that as we move along here. Two balls and one strike to Goldie. And Goldie last night wound up just a triple shy of the cycle, three for five, including that home run, his 13th of the year. He had the one that tied the franchise record, six home runs in one game. And he's now hit safely in 11 straight. Full count, three and two. Jake Lamb would be next in the cleanup spot today. Nice. Dropped it in there. He's got some good breaking pitches, and he uses one there to strike out Goldie. Zach Brenke coming up from Citizens Bank Park. here at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia and your Arizona forward starting pitcher for the Diamondbacks is Zach Greinke. He's won six straight starts dropped that ERA to three seven five the lowest it's been all year. He's given up just two runs in his last twenty three innings and today he looks for his tenth win. Yeah, no matter how you slice it and dice it his last six he has been absolutely outstanding. He did give up four runs in six innings to the Padres but the team scored eight behind him an eight four victory in that one. And ever since then he has been absolutely on fire. Cody Ashey in the leadoff spot little dribbler to Gene Segura one pitch one out for Granke. The lineup for Pete McCannon's Phillies, who have scored only 218 runs this year, the fewest in the major leagues. We've seen Cody Ashey leading it off. The easy ground ball to second base. So Dubal Herrera making his way to the plate. Andres Blanco will hit third. Ryan Howard in the cleanup spot. Jimmy Paredes out in right field. Michael Franco at third base. Carlos Ruiz Chooch doing the catching. Freddie Galvis at short. And Jared Eikhoff, the pitcher on the mound. Phillies have just been taking a beating lately. They've lost four straight, eight of nine. A big shakeup in the batting order today for Pete McCannon as Odubel Herrera 
who's been doing very well in the leadoff spot gets dropped into the two hole. And the slumping Michael Franco is batting sixth on his bobblehead day. So here's O'Double, the Phillies leading hitter at 304 and six home runs. 0 for 4 last night, he struck out twice. Drive this one to deep left center field. That ball is going to go. Odubel Herrera, that's his seventh, and it's 1 0 Phillies. The 11th home run given up this year by Zach Rinke. was really jumping out of this ballpark last night figures to do so again today very warm afternoon here in Philly temperature in the low to mid 80s that ball got out of here in a hurry. So Dubal Herrera responds to being dropped out of that leadoff spot. It was a very rough day defensively at second base for Cesar Hernandez last night. Who did two balls in one inning? So Andres Blanco is in there at second base and batting third. Chops it to second base for Segura. Two outs. Our eye on defense for the D backs is brought to you by Nationwide Vision Center. Up it will be O'Brien in left, born in center, Tomas over in right field, left side of the infield, Jake Lamb at third, Nick Ahmed at shortstop, Gene Segura, Paul Goldschmidt on the right side, Wellington Castillo once again doing the catching for right hander Zach Cranky. The veteran Ryan Howard, now 36 years old, he'll be 37 in November, having a miserable offensive season, but still a fan favorite here. And what everyone pretty much assumes will be his final year as a Philly, there's ball one. Howard just 148 on the year. He can still take it deep. He's got 10 home runs. But just two hits and 19 at bats this month. Both those hits, by the way, are homers. The shift is on. Strike one. You see Jake Lamb, the third baseman, out there behind the second base bag, and Gene Segura on the outfield grass. Goldie right on the line at first. Missed inside, two and one. Come on, right. Ryan Howard really had things bottom out for him last month. He hit 101 in May. That's an entire month, almost all starts, during which he went seven for 69. Ouch. And he has lost the first base job to Tommy Joseph, who got the start last night. And he strikes out. But Granke gives up a homer, number seven for Odubel Herrera. And the Diamondbacks trail it 1 0.
half has given the Phillies a 1 0 lead. It's the mini Let's Motor player profile here from Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, PA. Most home runs in a single game. The Diamondbacks last night tied a franchise record last uh, accomplished in 2012. Six home runs. Two by Asmani Tomas, two by Peter O'Brien, who's on deck to start this inning. One for Wellington Castillo, and one for Goldie. And Jake Lamb drops that one into right field, a leadoff single. Second hit of the ball game against Jared Eikhoff. And here comes big Peter O'Brien. What a night he had last night. Don't go to the refrigerator right now. Three for 20 since his recall from Reno. All three hits have been home runs. Two came last night. We're talking to assistant hitting coach Mark Grayson. The one to right field was the one that really impressed the coaching staff because it was a line drive that hit about three quarters of the way up the bleachers out there and right looked like a left handed pole hitter. Saw Peter be a little more patient last night. He swings and misses at the first pitch for Mike Off. He joked last night, you know, maybe he'll start mixing him some singles in there because uh, all he's hit are home runs, but he'll keep taking the homers. Those work too. Both times last night, part of back to backs for the Diamondbacks. Three run homer in the fifth ahead of Yasmani Tomas. The solo shot in the seventh followed Beef Wellington. 0 oh 2. And Chappelle was saying today that's why Peter is in the middle of the lineup. He can do that type of damage when he gets the barrel on the ball. In fact, last night was the first game this year in which Peter did not strike out. So they're looking for some more consistent contact, but down 0 2. Up and in. That's something that. Chip told us today they expect he really believes that because of the six home runs last night the Phillies game plan today Bob will be to pitch the D backs hitters inside they are up there looking for the ball in today oh, and that's part of Eikhoff's game anyway he relies so heavily on that slider breaking down and away from the right handed hitters he mixes in an occasional curve but that fastball in is designed to keep the hitters honest so they don't lean out over the plate and take that slider away. I think Jake Lamb seems to draw more pickoff throws than any base runner the Diamondbacks have. He just looks fast. <laughs> He's three for four and his stolen base attempts to his credit, but uh, let's be honest. Yeah. He's not winning any hundred yard dashes. Peter fights that off and it stays one and two into the Phillies dugout. I think for Jake it's more of a situational thing. You know, he gets on leading off an inning, and right away you think about the possibility of a stolen base, try to get into scoring position, or he gets on base with two outs in the inning and same situation. He wants to get into scoring position quickly. Those are usual run situations, even though Jake Lamb rarely runs. Well, we've mentioned that Jared Eikhoff has very good breaking stuff. Let's we'll see if he gets Peter to chase one here on one and two. Missed with it inside. Tried to drop it in there, but it's even two balls and two strikes. And that's the big curveball. A little bit slower than the slider and has more of a downward break on it. Missed off the inside corner with that one. Here comes the slider. It's in the dirt, and Peter has worked the count full three and two. Well, you got to believe the more he does this, Peter O'Brien works the count, sees some pitches, the more effective he's going to be, right? Absolutely. I think mean, just the, the more experience he can get it, at bats here at the major league level, and the more pitches you see, you get to recognize them a little quicker. You develop a book on certain pitchers. Certain teams pitch you the same way. Every pitcher in the rotation, it can only help him the more pitches he sees. Full count three and two. Jake Lamb holds it first and O'Brien strikes out. That's the first out in the second. Well, we want to get this in early today. Hey fans, a D-backs home run today means a free jumbo jack tomorrow at participating Jack in a Box locations with the purchase of a large drink. 
He backs have been aggressive up there. That's three straight hitters who have swung at the first pitch. Two strikeouts and a single. So with one on one out here is Beef Wellington. And Castillo, who homered last night, has been a strikeout machine as of late. A lot of swings and misses lately for Wellington Castillo. There's the strike over one. Four strikeouts and a homer last night for Beef. He has struck out in 10 of his last 12 at bats. And he's at 270, the homer last night, number eight on the year. Speaking of strikeouts, Goldie's punch out to end the first inning. Gave the Diamondbacks an even 600 on the season. And then Peter O'Brien jumps it up to 601 with his punch out. That's third most in the National League. There's another swing and a miss. Castillo, it's been an epidemic for Wellington. He has punched out in 18 of his 38 at bats in June. Well, those are the kind of numbers that will have a team sending you to the eye doctor. Yeah. You know, when a guy strikes out a lot, the first thing you say is, Are you seeing the ball okay? The home run last night was his first since May 3rd. Straight away center field to lead off the seventh inning. And then O'Brien followed with his second home run of the ball game. Castillo down 0 and 2. Now Castillo and Tomas combined had 10 at bats in the ball game last night. They went deep three times and struck out the other seven. Hard to win consistently when you're not putting the ball into play at least. Nice. There's another strikeout for Castillo. That's three for Eikhoff, two down. Eikhoff has used that slider more and more as the season has progressed. And why not? That's a nasty late breaking pitch. Obviously tough to identify for Diamondbacks hitters, at least the first time through the order. Well, here's a man who homered in the fourth and fifth innings last night. Yasmani Tomas, 261 now with nine home runs. And just as we've discussed, here's another guy who's been a real all or nothing type lately. Struck out three times last night and homered twice. And we were walking over there on our way to Tony Luke's on the left field concourse where he hit this baseball. And when we got out there, we said, wow. That's a really, really long way to hit a ball. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously last night it was very dark at the time. Right there. It just disappeared way out there on the concourse. I mean, if it would have been a little farther into fair territory, it would have hit in the back of the upper deck up there somewhere. Diamondbacks having a tough time figuring out Jared Eikhoff. He has already gotten eight swings and misses in the ball game today. He's ahead of Yasmani Tomas, no balls and two strikes. Yasmani was saying after the night last night, it, he couldn't forget that he hit his first big league homer in this ballpark last year. And he really believes he has more confidence here than in any other park in baseball, like Citizens Bank. This is his park. Six for 14 career here. Half those hits are home runs. Well, the leadoff single by Lamb. Eikhoff then punches out three in a row. He struck out four and leads it one nothing.
hang him a 2 1 center cut fastball right here, and he's 2 0, and he's going to just launch one. There it goes! Oh, no! Right on cue! Goldie, Goldie, gone! Wow! You're Kreskin. Tony Luke's on you, BB! You got it. I'll pay for that any day. And uh, he's not only a man of his word, he's a tremendous cheesesteak chef. This was Bob Brenly before the game today. Back there, apron on, spatula in hand, cooking at Tony Luke's. Loving it. Loving it. How was that? It was fun. You know, I didn't have to do much of the work. I just put the cheese on the steak and threw some onions on there and slopped it all into a bun. Huh. Jimmy Paredes leads off the Phillies second. Uh -huh. Goldie did all the work. Yeah, he really did. I just got to eat the cheese stick. Paredes on a one hop right to Segura. Third ground out to second base already of the four outs in the game. Well, it's Mike Alfranco bobblehead day here at Citizens Bank Park today. And here is Franco who had some just awful at bats last night. He went 0 for 4, struck out twice. So Pete McCannon has dropped them in the order. Despite the fact he leads the Phillies with 11 homers and 33 RBIs. Hit the ball hard. His first two at bats glide out to right, glide out to center, and in his last two at bats, his bobblehead doll would have had a better chance. <laughs> yeah, there were some ugly swings and misses, and Pete McCannon was saying that Franco right now just not the same hitter that he was earlier in the year. Somehow he's gotten away from his plate discipline. He seems like he's getting frustrated up there and just swinging at everything, and that seemed to be the case last night, mm -hmm. certainly. So Franco four for 23 he struck out 10 strike uh, 10 times now in his last seven games. But he's ahead of Ranky 2 and 0. Watch this one up. Wellington Castillo up into that sun. Right in the left hand batter's box two up two down in the second for Granky. Can you tell when a guy is frustrated and trying to sort of swing his way through a slump? Yeah, you can just watch the body language. We saw it when the Marlins were in town and Giancarlo Stan was great a hitter as he can be. He was suffering mightily then, and you could tell. He'd swing and miss, and his shoulders would drop, his head would look down at his feet. And, uh, it, it's pretty apparent, uh, even for guys on the visiting team, the home team knows right away. You know, they know their teammates. And, how they react to certain situations, and you can tell when a guy is struggling. Carlos Ruiz, the veteran catcher at the age of 37, takes strike one, 219 and three homers. And going through a horrible offensive stretch right now, he is three for 36 at the plate since the middle of last month. And much like Ryan Howard, these guys are the leftovers from the 2008 World Championship team. Ruiz is in the final year of his contract. It is a period of transition for Phillies baseball. And when they had Roy Halladay and Cliff Lee and Cole Hamels on the pitching staff, uh, Carlos Ruiz was the guy that called all the games. They never shook him off. They had complete confidence in this guy behind the plate that he was going to call the right pitch in right situations. Now in his 11th year in the big leagues, all spends squatting back there for the Phillies. There is a club option on Ruiz for next year at four and a half million dollars, but that seems a long shot right now. Full count three and two. What did this guy do so well other than call a terrific game? What made him so great? He's just a solid defensive catcher. One of those guys you never have to doubt that he's going to block pitches in the dirt. He's going to throw out the base runners he should throw out. As you mentioned, call a good game for his pitcher. Make sure the defense is aligned properly. He's the next best thing to having a coach on the field. Well, he's slumping badly, but he gets the free pass here with two outs, and that'll bring up the shortstop, Freddie Galvis. Galvis one for four last night. He's hitting under 220. Does have six home runs. Galvis 0 for 8 lifetime against Zach Greinke with six punch outs. Go get him, kids. This should be interesting. The switch hitter who bats from the left hand side against Greinke. 
There's pitch swing and listed in the air to left field for Peter O'Brien. And Frankie Strands, the two out walk, will head to the third. Diamondbacks trail at 1 0. Nothing. July 2nd through the 4th All-American Weekend at Chase Field and get a bobblehead of America's first baseman who also was with us when we went to nice. Tony Luke's. It's Paul Goldschmidt bobblehead day Saturday July 2nd the Diamondbacks and the Giants that's a 7-10 game and on 4th of July you can enjoy the D-backs and Padres 6-10 start. Post game fireworks spectacular presented by Gila River Casinos get your tickets for all American weekend at dbacks.com. He got a little cheese whiz on his uniform out there today. Goldie bobblehead out at Tony Luke's as Zach Rankey whirls around and misses that one from Jared Eikhoff to lead off the third. Rankey a hitter up there, 290, two RBIs. Last time Zach started in this ballpark, he hit a home run. Ball in there for a strike. That was August 6th last year. Not so good on the mound. Went six innings, gave up six hits and six runs, but he did hit a homer. That beat 10 to 8 in that ball game. Well, Jared Eikhoff, like most of these Philly starters, is used to working with a very thin margin for error, so a one nothing lead is something that he's going to look forward to. There are Granke's numbers at Citizens Bank. It's this in the air to center field. It backs up Odubel Herrera. And he's got it for the first time. Jared Eikhoff has received less than three runs of support in his innings on the mound this year. He has had the fourth lowest run support average of any starter in the National League. So these guys are basically out there without a net. Can't make mistakes if you're a Philly starting pitcher. And Eikhoff has been getting ahead in the count seven of eight first pitch strikes so far. Now here's the number nine man Nick Ahmed. It's that time one and oh Nick singled and scored a run last night. He back scored ten runs on 16 hits. And Robbie Ray was outstanding. That one's going to drop in front of Ashy for a one out single. Third hit for the Diamondbacks against Jared Iko. Hey, fans, anytime the D backs score five runs or more, Taco Bell is giving away three free tacos with the purchase of a large drink between four and six the following day at participating locations. Now, the fast food trifecta is in effect all day today since the Diamondbacks won last night, so keep that in mind. 
I don't know it's 110 north of that in the valley so just get in the car the AC drive to Taco Bell get your pizza your jumbo jack a jack in the box and drive back. Listen to the governor and candy on the radio while you're waiting in the drive through and then get right back to the TV. Piece of equipment has to be retrieved from the Phillies on deck circle. Now we're set to go. Ahmed at first, one out for Segura, who singled his first time up. A little roller off the side of the mound. Galvis flips to Blanco, and everybody's safe. And here we go again with the Phillies infield defense, which has been a dumpster fire in the series so far. Blanco is generally very sure handed out there at second base but just cannot handle that backhanded flip from Freddie Galvis everybody say and Cesar Hernandez made two errors in one inning at second base last night so Blanco's in there today now he's got an error that's a fielder's choice E4 two on and one out for Michael Bourne who hit into a double play his first time up may get hurt. Breaking ball misses 1 and 0. Now Eikhoff's not throwing a first pitch strike. Behind in the count 2 and 0. Chip Hale really likes Michael Bourne's at bats whether it's been batting second like today or ninth like he often does. He gives them in either spot kind of a second leadoff man. Generally sees a lot of pitches. He's hit into one double play this might be another. Galvis can't turn it Bourne beats it out. They get the force on Segura on it in a third. The Phillies are going to take a look at this one. Kind of a slowly hit ball, and we know Michael Bourne runs extremely well. Took a long time to get out there to Blanco, and by the time Galvis turns it over, it looked like he did beat it. No challenge coming from the Phillies' dugout, so it's Ahmed. A runner at third, Bourne at first, two down for Goldie, who struck out looking his first time up. Eikhoff dropped one of those breaking balls in there for strike three to win the first. Drop another one in there, 0 and 1. If you'll notice, Eikhoff rarely throws his fastball in the strike zone. He'll elevate it when he's ahead in the count. He'll try to lead guys off the outside corner. We've seen him push a couple of Diamondbacks hitters off the plate with the fastball, but when he needs to throw a strike, he usually goes to the slider. He doesn't strike out a lot of guys with a bunch of high octane fastballs. He's 91 92 generally, four seam and two seam. Jam shot pop up foul ground. There's plenty of it here in this ballpark for Howard. And I call strands two. It stays one nothing Philadelphia.
begins tomorrow. It's the latest episode of Cup of Coffee as I sit down with A.J. Pollock. We'll talk about growing up in New England. His well-deserved reverence for Tom Brady and playing for Notre Dame. Also how he proposed to his wife. Don't miss Cup of Coffee with A.J. Pollock. It's brought to you by CenturyLink. It debuts Sunday 1.30 and 10. And that's only on Fox Sports Arizona. His reverence for who? Tom Brady. Oh, okay. Tommy. I didn't understand it the first time he said it. Now it makes sense. Hey, wise guy, huh? <laughs> Tom Brady. Jared Eikhoff, the pitcher. It's hard to do my Massachusetts character without profanity, so. <laughs> it's understandable. They often go hand in hand. <laughs> the numbers on Eikhoff as a hitter. Zach Greinke throwing the ball wicked high. That one's rolled off the side of the mound to Nick Ahmed. On away. Here's the leadoff man, Cody Ashey. Zach Greinke, pitching here at Citizens Bank Park, begins the ball game today. Unbeaten on the road this year. Five starts away from Chase Field. Zach is 4 0 with a 1 5 4 ERA. 35 innings on the road. He's struck out 38 and given up just six runs. But Odubel Herrera's solo shot in the first has been the only run of the game so far. There's strike one to Ashley, who grounded out his first time up. Shift is on again for the left hand hitting Cody Ashey. He's having a little chat with Laz Diaz back there. There you see the three infielders on the right hand side. Ashey has asked Laz Diaz to look at the baseball. I think he thought the ball hit in the dirt. I'm pretty sure Wellington got his glove underneath it, but that's uh, the state of the game now. Anytime a ball touches anything other than air, it has to be thrown out of the game. <laughs> One and two. So you're saying that didn't happen back in the day? Oh man. I mean there, there were times that the same ball would stay in play for three or four innings. That's hard to even fathom right now. I'll tell you how bad it was not bad how it was back then. If the pitcher made the third out of the inning and struck out at home plate. The catcher used to just give him the ball and he'd go back and take off his helmet and his Put his bat in the rack and get his glove and hat and go out to the mound with the same ball he just struck out with. God only knows what he did with that ball over there in the dugout. <laughs> or they just roll it back to the mound yeah. right after the last inning. And now, I mean, every time the ball touches dirt or grass, it's thrown out of the game. All right, something's going on down here with Wellington Castillo and Lanz Diaz. I think Wellington got something in his eye. Got to see it to catch it. Goldie backhands it at first. Cranky covers. Two down. And here's the man who homered in the first. His seventh of the year, the center fielder, Odubel Herrera. Once again, back in the day, a pitcher would go out to take his eight warm up throws, and if he was a guy that liked some imperfections on the baseball, when you throw the ball down to second base before the inning started, you one hopped it into second base to make sure it had a nice scuff on it before it got back to the mound. Now Granky's asking for a new baseball. Apparently, that one was too new. <laughs> and he'll go to work on that one. Talked about it last year with Odubel Herrera and that setup with the right foot leaning in on the inside of his arch. It just looks so uncomfortable. I would think the longer you would make him stand there and hold that position, the better your chances of getting him uncomfortable in that left handed batter's box. He looks uncomfortable from the moment he steps in there. 
Yeah, it must hurt just to stand that way, let alone try and hit. But he's had another very good year, Odubel Herrera. His second year in the big leagues, his second with the Phillies, a former Rule 5 pick out of the Texas Rangers system. A converted infielder, now a center fielder. Ouch. Here's that front foot. Ouch. I don't think I could stand that way for 30 <laughs> seconds. Plus he's got the back of those pants down under the cleats. Slaps that one right to Nick Ahmed. Three ground ball outs in the inning for Zach Greinke. We'll head to the fourth. It's one nothing Phillies. Here in Philadelphia, Todd Walsh back here with uh, Steve Bethune and Bob Remling. Guys, a, a trip on Diamondbacks Live after Tony Lokes to Bulls Barbecue. Finally, had a chance to to thank Greg Blazinski, the Bull here, for signing those Sports Illustrated covers a thousand years ago back in spring training in Sarasota, Florida, I think in 1981. And it was an interesting moment when we were done talking to Greg. Tony Larusa, who was his manager with the White Sox in the early 80s, came up and said, "I need that." Sports Illustrated cover and the other one. I got to show some guys. Jake There's Lamb a... gets this one up in the air, deep left field, and Cody Ashy <laughs> has it, just one step shy of the wall out there. First out in the fourth. Why did he need that? He said, "I got to show the guys this." He went inside the clubhouse and and told stories. There was Greg Luzinski and Tony Russo at the batting cage for almost 40 minutes today. That great went, 83 White Sox team. Yep. Uh, he went around and showed everybody and as I walked by and uh, Tony gave me the Sports Illustrated covers back I heard one of the coaches lean down and say he was on the cover of Sports Illustrated twice which when you think about it is pretty cool back in the day that was a big deal oh, yeah. two different teams American League National yeah. League Peter O'Brien has Greg Luzinski like power up there as I said to Greg I'm sure you guys can relate to this in, in my day in our era. If you were playing home run derby or wiffle ball or tennis ball baseball in the backyard somebody somewhere at some point was going to emulate Greg Luzinski. Now you can emulate him by eating a lot of barbecue. Yeah. Good stuff too if you want to follow Tony Luke's with the bull. And that's down in the uh, right field corner behind the right field foul pole the bull ring it's a big area out there they got picnic tables mm -hmm. and everything. One and one on Peter who struck out his first time up. All I know is catching behind Greg Luzinski when he was at the plate, <laughs> it was like being in a redwood forest. His legs were just <laughs> huge. He was a, a large man. Still is a large man. 1980 Phillies team. He played here for 10 years, Greg Luzinski. A 
And O'Brien strikes out for the second time. Two down. It's five strikeouts for Jared Eichhoff. Those were great Phillies teams, of course, with Bate McBride and Larry Boa. The Bull Greg Lazinski, the great Bob Boone behind the mm -hmm. plate. Mike Schmidt, another Ohio U grad who's working Phillies TV today. I saw you guys get together. For Schmidt is here today. He does weekend games for the Phillies, uh, only at home. What a gig. There he is. <laughs> now you followed him at Ohio University, right? Uh, yeah, by well, a few years. Directly. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you broke all of his records. Well, I broke a couple. I tied a couple. And as the story goes, a kid came along the next year and broke all my records. So I was in the book for you know six months. Well, you're on the list. <laughs> Two and zero on Wellington Castillo, a strikeout victim, and Welly has really had a problem with strikeouts. 11 Ks in his last 13 at bats, but he's ahead here. Two balls and no strikes. I'll tell you how the college game has changed. I tied his home run record for a single season with 10. <laughs> <laughs> was it the dead ball era? Uh, well, you know, some of the ballparks we played in back then, some of the college fields had no fences. If you hit it over the outfielder's head, it would roll and roll all the way over to the science building. You know, as long as you could run the bases, uh, you could get some inside the park home runs since there was no outside the park. They wouldn't even let you play like that now. No. 50 pitches for Eikhoff, 34 strikes. Of course, the outfielders could play 600 feet away from home plate. Castillo just drops the bat head on that one and dunks it into center, a two out single. Whatever it takes, just make a little contact. Good things happen. Driving the bus for Yasmani Tomas. I'd like to see him hit another home run right down the left field line like he did last night because today we'll be able to see it. I mean, once it cleared <laughs> that foul pole last night, it just disappeared. Yeah, it squeezed right in between where that upper deck seating area ends and the foul pole. You can see there's a Harry Callis statue right there, the great Phillies announcer, and it went somewhere on that concourse. This is hit deep to right field. Paredes backing up. And he's got room in front of the wall, and he has it for the third out of the fourth inning. Diamondback still trailing one nothing. Bottom half of the fourth inning. It's time to take a look back at this date in baseball history brought to you by Geico on this day 68 years ago right hander Robin Roberts made his major league debut for the Phillies against the Pirates Went eight innings gave up two runs but Phillies lost two to nothing of course Robin Roberts went on to be elected into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1976 and was the very first inductee into the Phillies Wall of Fame. Yeah, that's out there in center field along Ashburn Alley. 
Andres Blanco leads off the Phillies fourth against Zach Rinke. Blanco grounded out his first time up. He's got just 24 hits all year, but half of them have gone for extra bases. That one just ate him up down 0 2. Blanco, one of those guys who can play anywhere second base, third base, shortstop, first base. He's seen some time in the outfield as well. Here's a tapper that stays fair for Goldie. Nice high hop, one away, and Granke is now set down five in a row. Starting to get those easy ground balls, which is a sign that Zach is on top of his game in a real good rhythm out there, pitching to that soft contact. Well, Ryan Howard getting the start today, struck out his first time up to end the first. Now two for 20 this month. One forty seven on the year for Howard does have ten homers shift is on the there strike one he was informed by manager Pete McCannon recently that he will no longer be their primary first baseman that job now belongs to Tommy Joseph. And there is Tommy Joseph on a horizon high school in Scottsdale Howard can still take it deep you got to be careful. But this one's going to stay in the park in deep right center field for Michael Bourne. Howard 0 for 2. Here's Jimmy Paredes. Now those of the who have been watching Ryan Howard all season long say he's really having a hard time catching up to fastballs and when that's the case you tend to get your swing started a little bit earlier and then you become susceptible to off speed pitches. Howard has waved at a couple of Zach Greggy change ups already in this game. What's it like when you're managing if you're Pete McCannon here Bob and you've got a guy like Howard who's clearly at the end of the line here and who has been a franchise icon for a ball club and a city. How do you manage his what you assume will be his final year. Well it's not an easy thing to do. I had the same situation with Matt Williams at the end of his career with the Diamondbacks so, you know, kind of in a rebuilding mode and Matty was struggling a little bit and you know, at, at that point we called him and we knew that Matty was going to be designated. Ask him, how do you want this to end? How do you want it to end? And uh, we tried to coordinate it as best we could. Same thing with Mark Grace towards the end of his career. Yeah, you just sit down and you have to be honest with the guys. Uh, you know, they've all been around long enough to know uh, when you're giving them a line of BS. So you just tell them the truth. This is what's going on. We want to handle it the most painless way we possibly can. How can we make that happen? Well, the Phillies GM said yesterday they don't foresee getting rid of Ryan Howard before the end of the year. They still consider him a threat on the bench. And an occasional spot start like today. Paredes grounded out his first time up. He's a guy they just picked up. From the scrap heap. He started the year with the Orioles, played seven games with the Blue Jays, and now here he is as a Philly. And Granke strikes him out. Granke has now set down seven straight, but he trails at one nothing.
Houston Diamondbacks trailing one nothing and fans in today's game we are participating in a home run challenge to benefit a benefit prostate cancer research so far after four days one point seven million dollars has been raised and you can make a pledge by going to home run challenge dot org. A between innings proposal on the uh, video board here. Well, everybody in the league knows that the Diamondbacks lead the world in love. Hello. The backs have a base hit in every inning, but they trail at one nothing, trying to put something together against right-hander Jared Eichhorn, who has given up four hits, all singles. He struck out five and leads at one nothing. Well, it was nice of Zach to sort of wait and you know let everybody finish up with the proposal and the hugs and the tears and the kisses. Drives that one to Cody Ashey in left field. One away. It's a lot of pressure when you're going to propose anyway, but uh, you do it like they do it here. You got to get it in between innings. Got to keep the game moving. So if she's got to think about it, you could be in trouble. <laughs> Nick Ahmed singled his first time up. This is well hit deep left field and that ball is gone Nick Ahmed that's number four and we're tied at one. Nick Ahmed joins the Diamondbacks home run parade here at Citizens Bank Park. I wasn't sure if he had enough elevation to get that one over the fence in left field. A line drive variety home run looked like a changeup. Just fluttered down and in and Nick just dropped the bat head on it. A line drive. Looked like extra bases for sure but that ball carried on out of here like a lot of them do. One one ball game Gene Segura. Single to lead it off. There's strike one. Number four for Nick, and that is a jumbo jack. A free jumbo jack for everybody tomorrow, courtesy of Jack in the Box. The tenth home run given up this year by right-hander Jared Eikhoff, and now it's a one-one ball game. Late swing there by Segura down one and two. I think Eikhoff's only thrown three or four changeups in the ball game up to this point. Might not throw any more <laughs> after just, that one. I was <laughs> just thinking that. He's got two really good breaking balls and appears to have good fastball command today. Don't get beat on your fourth best pitch. Segura reaches down and drops that in left center field. Second hit for Segura. Hey fans when the D-backs win you win at Papa John's the day after every Diamondbacks win you get 50% off your regular menu price online order at Papa John's and our promo code D-backs 50 at Papa John's dot com. Diamondbacks trying to get something going finally. And now the third time through the order against Jared Eikhoff Michael Bourne 0 for 2. Gene Segura with two hits today moved back into third place in the multi hit games race Daniel Murphy still number one with twenty nine Starling Marte with twenty eight and now Gene Segura tied with cargo with twenty six. Segura is hit safely now in eight of his last nine games. Michael Bourne shows bunt takes a strike. about as much velocity as you'll see for Mike off 92 pretty much the top end end of his spectrum
Diamondbacks have now scored 11 runs in this series, nine of the 11 off of home runs, six solos, and the one three run homer for Peter O'Brien. Got some thumpers in this lineup. It's time to start thumping. It's a good ballpark to get that started. Missed with a fastball that time. And Bourne has ahead two balls and a strike. Eikhoff won his last start. That was Monday against Toronto. Six scoreless innings. He gave up only three hits. He's pitched well lately. Although he did walk four in that start. He's had much better command today. He was also a winner in his start previous to that. He beat the Cubs right here. One run on just two hits in seven innings. He had eight strikeouts. That's no small feat against that lineup. Two and two. Michael checking in with Matt Williams at third. Segura the runner at first and one out. A run in on the Nick Ahmed homer. His fourth of the year. Segura gets a big jump. There he goes. Bourne strikes out. And Segura's got it stolen standing up. Eighth stolen base for Gene Segura as they start the runner. Once again, one of those jumps that was so big, Gene Segura stopped and then continued on to second base, steals his eighth bag of the season without a play down there, standing up. I mean, that's pretty good when you can do that in the big leagues. A chance for Goldie. Go ahead, run in scoring position and two down. So far, Paul has. Struck out, popped up 0 for 2. There's a strike on one. Goldie, an 11 game hitting streak. Three home runs, 10 RBIs during that streak. Last night was the third time during his 11 game hitting streak he's had a three hit game. Coming inside here. Got it in on him and he fouled it back 0 2. Three for five last night at triple shy of the cycle. I think you're seeing an example, and people will argue whether there is such a thing as protection in the lineup, but Jake Lamb with a three hit game last night has a base hit and a long fly ball to left field already in this game. He's due up next, so the Phillies are going right after Goldie. Even with first base open, and there it goes. Way back and gone. Paul Goldschmidt, that's number 14, a two run homer, and it's 3 1 D backs. Well, they tried to go after Goldie with first base open, and they got burned on an 0 2 pitch. He takes it out of here. It looked like a slider that just stayed over the heart of the plate that time, and Goldie covered it to left field. Not as long as some of the blasts we saw in the ball game last night, but a no doubt nonetheless. Can we hit in this park all year? All year, please. That's a jumbo jack for everybody tomorrow. A jack in the box, and here is Jake Lamb. All the runs in the ball game scored on homers. Odubel Herrera, a solo shot, made it one nothing Phillies in the first. And now two D-backs homers in the fifth. Nick Ahmed, a solo homer, and Goldie a two-run shot. That one hit him. That was the 55th home run that the Phillies pitching staff has given up here at home this year. On the other side of the coin, they've only hit 26 in this ballpark. Here comes Bob McClure, the pitching coach. Yeah, the Phillies are really having problems. They are 6 and 21 in their last 27 games. And in those 27 games, they have a run differential of minus 66. Mm. 
Make that 56 home runs against the Phillies pitching staff. I neglected to add Knicks in there. There you go. Six and 21 in their last 27. Their ERA over that stretch is over five, and they've given up 49 homers. It's funny. Pete McCannon. The other night they just got clobbered by the Blue Jays and he already that's it we got to have a team meeting so we closed the doors they had a big team meeting they came out last night and they got thumped again 10 to 2 so after the ball game McCannon said well so much for my team meeting so much for firing them up <laughs> didn't work <laughs> Peter O'Brien has struck out twice over two. The fist, a jam shot into the Phillies dugout, and it's 0 and 1. Again, Peter swinging at the first pitch, and he needs a new bat. At least it was a fastball that time, a two seamer that was running right back in onto his hands. You know, Pete said last night he's aware that he's been a little amped up since he came up from Reno, trying to get in there and do damage right away. He was striking out a lot, and he struck out twice today. So there was very little patience in his at bats, but uh, he knows he's sort of got to ease into it a little bit now. And he says it's just really a matter for him of getting comfortable because he's in new ballparks. He's seeing pitchers for the first time. These are all new environments for him, new surroundings. He's not been to any of these places before. So hopefully he'll settle in. Oh, and two. I talk a lot about the advanced meetings where you go over the opposing team's pitching staff and the pitchers go over the opposing team's hitters and you know, sometimes for a guy that's just a, a natural see it hit it kind of a guy that can kind of fog your brain a little bit you start thinking too much. Well he says he feels as if. He's been pitched to like he's been in the big leagues for 10 years. Because it seems like his minor league power numbers put him on everybody's warning radar and he's really not getting a whole lot of solid fastballs to turn on. Here comes a fastball right here. One and two. Hits it over the mound a slow roller Galvis charges and throws him out. But the Diamondbacks get three. The home run parade continues with one out. Nick Ahmed starts it off. A solo shot, number four for Nick. And then after a Segura single, it's Goldie, Goldie gone. His 14th, and it's 3 1 Diamondbacks.
Yeah, Stephen Bob, if I could chase your Pete O'Brien story here, just talking about uh, him getting a shot here and knowing he's going to get a shot in, in the major leagues for a considerable period of time as Granky delivers the first pitch here at the inning. I was talking to Mark Grace and Pete McCannon today for an interview that we'll have on our pregame show on D-Backs Live on Monday. Pete was Mark's first manager in Peoria in A-Ball in 1986. He's the guy that said he was going up to the show as the AAA manager just before Mark embarked on his major league career. There's the second pitch. It's now 2-0. and all. As Mark tells the story and as Pete remembers, he told Mark Grace, look, you're going to the majors. We know you can hit even though you're hitting below the Mendoza line. But you got a couple of days, maybe three, to figure it out. No pressure. No pressure. Michael Franco swings and misses. Things have changed a little bit. Well, it worked. Yeah. That was the message conveyed to, to Mark also from Don Zimmer, his first manager with the Cubs. Got a weekend or so. Go get him. Here you go. Well, Zach Greinke's retired seven straight. He's still given up only one hit, the Herrera homer in the first inning. And now he's got a 3 1 lead. Well, the reality is for every Mike Trout or Bryce Harper that's handed a full time job at the major league level from the moment they put on their cleats. Uh, there's 10 guys that have to prove that they belong in the big leagues before they're given a shot to play every day. There's a pop up behind the mound. They got this thing surrounded. Goldie's got it. And that's the first out in the fifth. Well look at Jake Lamb. Jake was a sixth round pick out of college at Washington and he's. Worked his way up through the minor league system. He's sort of come and gone a bit at the big league level. He's not been guaranteed everything. Still sits against lefties. He's a work in progress. A guy being groomed. Carlos Ruiz, the only walk of the ball game so far, issued by Grinky. What did they tell you when you first showed up? Did you just be ready? <laughs> I mean, I was coming up from AAA Phoenix and uh, told the story before. I would catch one day, play third the next, catch again, play center field, catch, play right field. Uh, I was the very definition of a utility player, and Frank Robinson liked that, the versatility, and uh, he just told me, stay ready. You might play anywhere at any time. And but my, my they didn't tell you you got two days or you're gone. Oh, no, no, no right. nothing like that. <laughs> And my catching mate was Milt May, and you know, Milt wasn't the fastest runner in the world, so there were a lot of instances where I got into games as a pinch runner late in a close ball game running for Milt May, and you know, just tried to take advantage of every opportunity that was presented and hope something good happened. One and two on Carlos Ruiz. That's this in the air, foul ground, first base side, Goldie. Boy, there's a ton of foul ground mm -hmm. in this ballpark. Well, Ruiz is another guy. He signed as a free agent in 1998 as a skinny little second baseman from Panama. Billy said they wanted him to learn how to catch. He spent the entire year in 1999 honing his craft behind the plate and then started playing in the minors with the Phillies in 2000 as an everyday catcher. Freddy Galvis, the shortstop, Zach Greinke, trying to close out his third consecutive 1 2 3 inning. Galvis flied out in his first at bat. Well, then you got a guy like Galvis who's still a young player. He's 26 years old. But one of the Phillies' top prospects is a guy they consider a big part of their future. A shortstop, J.P. Crawford, their number one draft pick from three years ago. And he just moved up to Triple A, so Galvis has got this kid breathing down his neck in the minor leagues. And there have been some reports that the Phillies might listen to some trade offers for Freddie Galvis at the deadline this summer. Only a few guys, only a, a gifted few, are really on firm, solid ground in this game, aren't they? Oh, yeah. You're, you're always uh, evaluated on what have you done lately. And yeah, certainly some guys get a little more rope. You know, a guy like Goldie, sure. uh, he's got a track record. Zach Greinke, he has a track record. So they don't have to worry about one bad day at the plate or one bad outing. He rings up Galvis, third strikeout for Granky, who has retired 10 consecutive Phillies and leads at 3 1.
D backs on homers by Nick Ahmed and Paul Goldschmidt have a 3 1 lead over the Phillies and the Fanatic as we get set for the sixth inning. What's next brought to you by CenturyLink. Another game time uh, different start tomorrow with the whole thing and the schedules and the times. This is a uh, this is weird wild stuff. Uh, 10 35 in the morning first pitch back home the great state of Arizona. Archie Bradley on the mound for the Diamondbacks against uh, Zach Eflin who has an ERA of 27. And then Shelby Miller pitches on Monday against former D-back great Jeremy Hellickson. It's a weird series. You got a four gamer Friday through Monday, all four different start times. Now yeah, we talk all the time how baseball players are creatures of habit, and you have to be at your best physically and mentally to succeed in this game. And then you have four different start times in four days, nine in nine days for that matter. Castillo bounces the first one foul. I have a. Uh, a note for you here, BB. Okay. Your Valley Honda dealers' key to the game was a Winthorpe and Valentine, right? Keeping a Philadelphia theme from the great movie Trading Places with Eddie Murphy and Dan Aykroyd. Billy Ray Valentine, Capricorn. <laughs> uh, the idea was that you could, would get Eikhoff and Granky to trade ERAs because Granky came in at 3.75 and Eikhoff was at 3.40. Well, Eikhoff is trending up. And Greinke is trending down in a good way for ERA. You can see right there the changes in the earned run averages over the course of the ball game so far through five innings. I like it. So you have once again <laughs> been right on with your Valley Honda dealers. Key to the game. I owe it all to my staff. You embrace the Philadelphia theme, a little pop culture in there. That's solid work. The wit whiz working last night, six home runs. That'll roll foul for Beef Wellington. Pork bellies, Winthorpe, pork bellies. <laughs> That's how they make bacon, which you might find on a bacon, lettuce, and tomato sandwich. Well, again, we need a new baseball. That one. Somebody breathed on it. Yep. Broken bat. That one's going to drop in left center field. A base hit for Wellington Castillo, and he's two for three. Blooper into center field on a defensive swing and a broken bat blooper into left field for a base hit. That's how you work your way out of a slump. Just get some base hits, get on base, remember what it feels like to be part of the offense. And striking out a ton, but a couple of just reach out, stick the bat out there, and drop a couple of base hits for him. As Bonnie Tomaso for two. Diamondbacks once again have a base hit in every inning in the ball game. And the leadoff man is on for the third time today. Mike off at 80 pitches, 55 strikes. Both of Yasmani Tomas's homers last night went out to left field. And Tomas this season really has been pulling the ball much more often than he did last year when nearly everything he hit seemed to be on the ground between first and second base. But the Diamondbacks have always thought that Tomas's real power comes in hitting line drives to right center. But this year, about 40% of everything he hits is to left field. A big difference from last season. And a lot of those pitches are off the plate inside. We've talked about that, marveled at that throughout the season, how he can keep those balls fair down the left field line when they're a good six inches off the inside corner. Yeah, when teams seem to challenge him up and in close to the strike zone, he generally beats them. Talked about how Eikhoff has gotten almost no run support, and it's a deja vu all over again for him. Only one run so far. In fact, the Phillies only have one hit. That was the Odubel Herrera homer in the first inning. 
He has the fourth lowest run support of any starting pitcher in the National League, Jared Ico. Two and two on Yasmani Tomas. It's a tapper to third. Michael Franco, a high throw. Blanco, a nice job to get the ball and keep his foot on the base. And they get the force on Castillo. Throw a little high there from Michael Franco. Zach Greinke 0 for 2. Those are the kind of plays that there'll be no error in the scorebook because you can't assume a double play but you know, a good throw to Blanco at second base they probably turn that double play but instead there's one out in the inning with a runner on base. Blankoff still has some work to do here. Blanco charges as Greinke bunts that one foul. Michael Franco bobblehead day here at the ballpark today. There is the figurine. Franco creeps in again from third. Greinke pulls back but takes a strike and whacks himself on the head for not dropping that one down. That's just instinct. You see that pitch leave the pitcher's hand and start up before it takes the break and comes back down into the zone. Your first instinct is to get out of the way, but in reality, that's a good pitch to bunt because it's already moving down. Very easy to bunt the top half of the baseball on a curveball if you know it's coming. So lost the runner at first, one out, 0 and 2 on Zach Greinke. Breaking ball misses, a ball and two strikes. This is what he wanted anyway. Swing away. Oh, yeah, well, he's a hitter. <laughs> Batting 290 coming into the ball game today. And now just over 270 after an 0 for 2 so far. Well, Ikoff, all things considered, despite the two home runs, is. Uh, Given the Phillies a pretty good effort here today, it's something they've desperately needed from any of their starting pitchers. We mentioned they've lost 21 of their last 27. And during that span, the Phillies rotation has a collective ERA of just about eight and a half. So compared to what they've been rolling out there, this is a Cy Young performance. Pass ball inside misses and Granky's back even two balls and two strikes. Bullpen will get busy. Andrew Bailey, the right hander. Once an American League Rookie of the Year, twice an All-Star. Been through a lot of injury issues. The 2-2 to Granky. It's this in the air. Along the right field line, Paredes. And that's the second out. The Chaz Roberts air conditioning cool play of the game. Comes courtesy of Nick Ahmed with the Diamondbacks down 1-0 and one out in the fifth. Ahmed takes Eikhoff out of here, his fourth of the year. And that tied it up. Goldie followed later with a two-run homer, and that's where we stand. It's 3-1. Here's Bob McClure to the mound. Eikhoff at 90 pitches, 62 strikes. And Bailey warming up in the bullpen. Pitcher spot is due to lead off the Phillies' sixth. Eikhoff has not been able to retire on that today. Nick has singled in homer. He's two for two.
Breaking ball. Gets ahead with two of them 0 2 now. You like what you've seen from Jared Eikhoff? Yeah, he's pretty impressive with his breaking stuff. Uh, yeah, I'd like to see him have a little more confidence in his fastball. You know, he's thrown some good ones off the plate. We saw him jam Peter O'Brien badly, broke his bat. Ahmed three for three, dunks it into left field. I mean, it's one thing to have good breaking pitches, and Eikhoff does have a good curve and a really good slider. But when you throw them as often as he does, eventually the hitters get a little better feel for it. They stay on it a little better, and like that last base hit there for Nick Ahmed, just make enough contact, get the ball over the infield in front of the outfield. Pete McCann the skipper has his bullpen busy. A right hander is up. Segura's got a pair of singles. He scored a run. He'll hit with two outs. Tomas at second and Ahmed at first. There's a fastball, but he missed with it. 1 0. Diamondbacks about hit the Phillies 9 to 1. Chance to tack on at least one more here, and Segura's ahead, two balls and no strikes. Count goes to the slider. Mentioned it earlier in the ball game. When he needs to throw a strike, that's the pitch he has the most confidence that he can put it on the edges of the strike zone. Fastball missed again. He's not been able to locate that fastball in this inning, and he's behind three and one because of it. Jared Eikhoff pitched collegiately at Olney Central College, which is in Olney, Illinois. The 15th round pick. The 3 1 to Segura. The bases are loaded. First walk of the ball game issued by Jared Eikhoff is going to be the last battery faces. Here comes Pete McCannon. And Eikhoff has come to the end of the road. He's loaded the bases with two outs for Michael Bourne. Diamondbacks about hit the Phillies 9-1. They lead it 3-1 and threatening more with the bases full. Back after this.
at Citizens Bank Park in Philadelphia, PA. D backs have a 3 1 lead over the Phillies, and they have the bases loaded with two outs in the sixth inning for the new pitcher. It's the veteran right hander, Andrew Bailey, who went to high school in Haddonfield, New Jersey, about seven miles from this ballpark. Big time closer when he broke into the big leagues with the Oakland A's. Twice an all star. Has battled through some injuries, pitched a handful of games with the Yankees last year. Now here he is pitching for essentially his hometown team. And he inherits a bases loaded two out mess facing Michael Bourne. There's a little flare out to left for Cody Ashey, and Andrew Bailey puts out the fire. Diamondbacks leave him loaded. Bottom six on the way. They lead it 3 1. Well, Zach Greinke has given up only one hit through five innings. That was Odubel Herrera's solo homer. In the first, it was 1-0 Phils. Diamondbacks now lead it 3-1 in our Gig Life High Speed Highlights. Brought to you by Cox is all about Zach Greinke, baby. He has now set down 10 straight. Another vintage Zach Greinke performance. Only three strikeouts in the game. That's not his game. His game is pitching to soft contact, and he's done that all afternoon with the exception of the Herrera homer. Pitcher spot leads off the Phillies sixth, and here's the rule five pick, Tyler Goodell, who looks at strike one. Goodell, 234, three RBIs, or a three homers, pardon me, was hitless in three at bats last night. Frankie jumps ahead 0 and 2. This is another area where the Phillies offense has really struggled this year guys coming off the bench for Pete McCann and pinch hitters are 13 for 98 that's a 133 batting average no homers. Driven in four runs in 98 at bats, struck out about a third of the time. Frankie missed with that one. It's one and two. Tyler Goodell was the very first pick in the Rule Five draft in December. Phillies got him off the Tampa Bay Rays roster. And prior to this year, he had never played even a single day above Double A as a professional, and now. Here he is in the big leagues where he will stay all year long if the Phillies want to keep him. But they like what they've seen so far. It's two and two. Hey, 
fights that one off, rolls it to shortstop. Ahmed throws him out. 11 straight set down by Grinky. Hey, Diamondbacks fans, fill out your 2016 Insurance MLB All Star Game ballot now at dbacks.com on your computer, tablet, or smartphone. You can vote up to 35 times. Vote today, vote tomorrow at dbacks.com slash vote. Tyler Goodell was playing left field while Cody Ashey was out with an oblique injury, suffered in spring training. He missed the first two months. And now Ashy is back from the DL, came back a couple of weeks ago. So Goodell has been worked into some other outfield spots. Because Ashy is pretty much a true left fielder, a converted third baseman. This is in no man's land out there. And Michael Bourne comes in and saves the day. They retire Ashy. Two outs. Definitely want to communicate out there if you're Michael Bourne running toward Peter O'Brien. Yeah. Peter's going to win that one most of the time. Peter is a big dude out there. Well, here's the guy with the Phillies only hit against Granky. It's Odubel Herrera. A homer with one out in the first is seventh of the year. And Zach Granky will try to close out his fourth consecutive one, two, three inning. Phillies have not had a base runner since Carlos Ruiz's two out walk in the second. Two on O'Double. Got him. That's four strikeouts for Zach Greinke, who has set down 13 straight. It's 3-1 D-backs. Seventh inning, the Diamondbacks lead the Phillies 3-1. And we want to congratulate the latest member of our D-Backs family. This is Angelina Joy Lamb. And congratulations to the parents, Nolan and Langelique. And of course, Grandma and Grandpa, Dennis Lamb and Tony Lamb, stars of the Dennis Lamb Show. There's the uh, new granddaughter. Outstanding. So. Bundle of joy. Eight pounds, ten ounces. Congratulations, Nolan and Langelique. New pitcher for the Phillies. We saw him yesterday. It's the right-hander Severino Gonzalez. He made his first career relief appearance in yesterday's ball game. Worked one and two-thirds innings after he was a call from Triple A Lehigh Valley just before the ball game. 
Give up a couple of hits, struck out a couple of Diamondbacks hitters, otherwise zeros across the board in his inning in two thirds. Well, Goldie doubled off him last night in the sixth inning, and he'll lead off the seventh. He homered in his last at bat, his 14th of the year. Our Jimmy John's delivery of the game off Jared Eikhoff, a hanger, and Goldie did not miss it, a two run shot. And check his swing there, and he's down 0 2. Homer's in that fifth inning from Nick Ahmed, a solo shot, and Goldie, the two run homer. After the D backs trailed it 1 0. Goldie has played 17 games in this ballpark counting today. And in those 17 games, he has six homers and 15 RBIs. <laughs> that one buckled him, and he rings up Goldschmidt for the first out in the seventh. Ooh, good, hard, tight slider that time. Drops it on that inside corner. Goldie looked like oh, maybe that was a tick low, but Laz Diaz had it right, I think. Jake Lamb singled in the second. He was hit by pitches last time up in the pant leg. There's ball one. Oh, strike one. And Laz Diaz, they put ball one up on the board. He's telling him to change it, and there it is. How about Jake Lamb, a power hitter with an on-base percentage of about 360? Chip Hale really believes that Goldie and Lamb are the two guys on the team who will take a walk and see pitches and work the pitch count. All that stuff that doesn't really go into the stat columns, but the managers and the coaches just love. And it's pretty good when those guys are essentially your three and four hitters. Jake Lamb drives that one deep right field, and that's going to go. There's number 13 for Jake, and it's 4 1. Another Diamondback homer, and they don't want it. <laughs> the Diamondbacks hit six home runs in the ball game last night. That's their third today, and it's 4 1. There's a swing before he lost the grip on the bat. Kind of an awkward looking finish to the swing, but nothing awkward about this one. Ooh, that slider just dropped right down and in where Jake likes him. He barreled it up. Another line drive home run, this time to right field. There's Peter O'Brien 0 for 3. Swings at the first pitch and misses 0 and 1. Peter has struck out twice, grounded out. Number 13 on the year for Jake Lamb, a jumbo jack. Check this swing one and one. You know, we've talked about Goldie and Lamb a lot this year. Just the fact that they see so many pitches and pitchers have to pitch them very carefully because they might take you out of the ballpark if you make a mistake. And those grinding at bats back to back in the lineup uh, present opportunities for guys hitting farther down the lineup. And you know Bob when you line all these guys up. Goldie and Lamb and Castillo and Tomas and O'Brien and Peralta. When he's healthy, he's not in there today with a bad back. But this is a lineup that should do a lot of damage. Like that right there, but Pete can't keep it fair. Upper tank. And if you add in Segura and eventually A.J. Pollock up top somewhere, then you've really got something going. Take by O'Brien. He's worked it full three and two. Second three two count in the ball game for Pete. Castillo on deck. Oh, 
And much like Goldie with two strikes, Peter O'Brien chokes up about a half an inch on that bat, gets that bottom hand up off the knob of the bat, gives himself a little bit better bat control, but loses none of the power. Well, that's something that they really noticed and talked a lot about in spring training, the way that Pete is able to make adjustments with two strikes. Chip Hale is very impressed with that. Shorten up a little bit. Must be hard for a big guy, 6'4, with a big swing to shorten up in a two strike count. Uh, he still has a 500 foot home run in the back of his mind. He may be choked up on the bat, but he's looking to do some damage. Off this one straight back. Ruiz will give it a look, but it's out of play. Bit of bat here for Peter O'Brien. It's all about generating bat speed and hitting that ball on the barrel. I mean, the greatest home run hitter in the history of this game used to choke up a good inch and a half. Barry Bonds, Hunter Pence in San Francisco, a guy that has big time power. He always chokes up on the bat. Out in front a bit, just did get a piece. With that Jake Lamb homer. The Phillies have now allowed 20 in their last five games. Oh, <laughs> how are we looking? It's a nice park to hit in. You get a nice warm Saturday afternoon like today, a nice warm night like last night. It'll go. Boy, Peter O'Brien mm. turning in a big league at bat right here. This is great to see. He's run out of pine tar. Eleventh pitch of the at bat right here. <laughs> Pulls that one foul. We'll keep going. Number twelve on the way. Boy, for a guy Bob that often got himself out when he first came up in three or four pitches, this is a giant leap forward right here. Now you hope this carries over whatever mindset he has grinding out this at bat. He has fouled off six, three, and two pitches. Gets this one up in the air to first base for Howard. Two outs. Hey fans, stay cool this 4th of July inside air conditioned Chase Field. The Diamondbacks take on the Padres at 6:10, then relax as the roof opens for a post-game fireworks spectacular courtesy of Gila River Casinos. It's truly the best fireworks show in town. So visit dbacks.com. That is a lot of fireworks up there. They do a tremendous job. Synchronized with music. Oh, it'll be a great night. Wellington Castillo looks at strike one. Don't forget July two, three, and four All American Weekend at Chase Field. July second is Goldie Bobblehead Night. Fourth of July fireworks. Dbacks.com/slash/ticketsfans. All American Weekend. Playing the Giants on Saturday and the Padres on the Fourth of July. Get your Goldie bobblehead, get your fireworks. That'll be a great weekend to come out to the ballpark. Dbacks.com slash tickets. Castillo can't check. As Diaz calling that one. He did not appeal, but Jake Lamb gets his 13th, another Diamondback homer, and they lead it 4-1.
the Phillies 10 to 1. They've hit three homers and lead it 4 1 as we start the home half of the seventh. Time now, fans, for greater coverage of baseball brought to you by T Mobile. A look around the rest of the National League West. Giants are losing in St. Pete 2 1. Rockies losing at Miami 1 0. Later on today, Max Scherzer pitches against the Padres at Petco Park. And former D back Chase Anderson on the mound in L.A. against another former D back great, Battle and Mike Bolsinger. Well, Zach Greinke will start the seventh inning, having thrown only 66 pitches, 48 for strikes. He's given up only one hit and has retired the last 13 batters he's faced. Andres Blanco leads off the Phillies seventh. Greinke has walked one, struck out four. Well, a ball game to keep an eye on. At least I know Paul Goldschmidt will. Tim Lincecum pitching for Oakland, or rather the Angels tonight against Oakland. The A's haven't announced a starter in that ball game, but the freak just called up from uh, Salt Lake City, yeah. wearing number 55 again, from what I understand. Blanco over two. The Phillies only hit Odubel Herrera's home run in the first inning, a solo shot. How about Zach Greinke? His next pitch will be number 70. It's just <laughs> the model of efficiency. This is how you're supposed to pitch. And you know his first two outings in a Diamondback uniform, both big disappointments. The opening day loss to Colorado when he gave up three homers. Then the loss to the Cubs, but following those two starts, he has been Bob every bit the ace the Diamondbacks paid for this winter. Exactly as advertised. Here's his line so far today: 70 pitches, 50 strikes. That one's going to squirt through. Second hit for the Phillies, a leadoff single in the seventh, and Blanco's aboard. We've had starts for and against the Diamondbacks this year when pitchers were at 70 pitches in the third inning. Oh, yeah. Ryan Howard over two. He has struck out fly now. Well, if you take away those first two starts, and of course you don't get to do that, but if you could, Granke in his last 12 starts is 9 and 1 with a 3 0 1 ERA. And the Diamondbacks have won 10 times in those 12 starts. First pitch swing and a sky high fly ball to center for Bourne. Howard 0 for 3, 1 down. That's always a big out. The uh, Phillies don't have a lot of power in this lineup. Certainly, Ryan Howard, a guy that can lose one for you if you make a mistake and retire him on one pitch on an easy fly ball to shallow center. That's huge. Jimmy Paredes. Well, he's still a threat. I mean, he's a big presence in that left hand batter's box. If you can get back into the game or tie it with one swing, I know it's a 25, 23 million dollar bench player, but he's still got a role on this ball club. Paredes is grounded out, struck out 0 for 2. This is a utility guy who's moved around a lot, never really stuck anywhere. Someone asked Pete McCannon, yeah, why'd the Phillies pick up Paredes? And McCannon said, well, he's a better hitter than some of the guys we have. <laughs> <laughs> they want to corner the market on utility players. Well, he was waived by the Orioles in the middle of last month. Blue Jays picked him up. They kept him for only seven games before he was designated for assignment, and the Phillies picked him up for some cash on June the first. Fastballs in there for strike two. Zach pitches like a mind reader sometimes. He just threw a fastball right down the middle. Now rarely does he ever throw a fastball right down the middle of the plate. It's always on the corners, down at the knees. If he wants to elevate, he elevates. 
It's cool. almost like he knows when the hitter's going to take a pitch, and he just throws it right down the middle like a BP fastball. That's a foul ball. Well, that's just what experience, clairvoyance, savvy, luck. I'm not sure what it is, but uh, he seems to be able to read hitters' minds, know when they're in full swing mode, and maybe when they're a little more patient. He has won his last six starts, beating the Yankees, the Cardinals, the Padres, the Astros, the Rays, and the Dodgers. And today, with a 4 1 lead, going for his seventh consecutive win. This ball is well hit toward the right field corner. Tomas won't get there. He cuts it off shy of the wall. Blanco heads for third, and Paredes has a double. mistake about it. that ball was struck well to right field but once again Yasmani Tomas really running hard really laboring to get the balls over in that right field corner took several steps to slow his momentum and Paredes in at second base with a double well make no mistake about it this guy can tie this ball game up with one swing Michael Franco on his bobblehead day at the ballpark today but he's been a free and wild swinger lately 0 for 2. A dangerous hitter leading the Phillies with those 11 home runs and 33 RBIs. Blanco is at third, Paredes at second, and one out. Four for his last 25 up there with 10 strikeouts. Fastball misses and Greinke's behind 2 and 0. Carlos Ruiz is on deck. He would be next. a guy who lately you can get to chase pitches outside the zone but he's been able to hold off so far and is ahead three and oh I think it's one of those situations where Zach Greinke doesn't really care if he walks Franco he's not going to toss him a cookie up there and let him hit it out of the ballpark he's going to go ahead if he has to walk the guy go after Carlos Ruiz in a double play situation Ruiz an extremely slow base runner hitting under 220 on the year Greinke at 80 pitches 56 strikes that's in there, three and one. Now that's the Franco they've been seeing lately. Full count three and two. He wants to talk it over with Castillo. Michael Franco is not really hitting at his home park this year. His batting average, nearly 100 points better on the road than it is at Citizens Bank Park. He's only homered three times here all year. And he's had more at bats at home than on the road. Second and third, one out. Tying run at the plate, three balls and two strikes. Boy, more and more you see him, Bob, taking these swings. He's falling over, he's looking behind his back. I mean, he's just all over the place. This is an enormously talented young baseball player, but he's a little bit of a mess right now.
struck him out. And that's the swing that they were looking for. Two down in the seventh. A lot of fastballs leading up to this 3 2 curveball off the plate away. Marco loses his helmet, about to lose his mind chasing that pitch. So here is Carlos Ruiz. Two on and two out. He has walked and popped up 0 for 1. The only walk of the ball game issued by Zach Greinke. Andres Blanco is at third. Jimmy Paredes at second. Drives it to center. Michael Bourne backing up near the track, and he's got it. Well, the first minor bump in the road for Zach Greinke, but he escapes unscathed. It's still 4-1 defense. Where the Diamondbacks have a 4 1 lead. Hey, D backs fans, if you can't catch the games on TV, you can stream them live on your mobile device with the all new Fox Sports Go app. You can download the app and take Fox Sports Arizona and Diamondbacks baseball with you wherever you go. We go to the eighth inning where the D backs have out hit the Phillies 10 3 and lead it 4 1. Diamondbacks with a franchise record tying six homers last night. They've hit three today. Ahmed, Goldie, and Lamb. Yes, Goldie and Lamb homer in the same game again. The nine home runs over a two game span ties the D backs record. The major league record for home runs in a two game span is 14, set by the 1999 Cincinnati Reds. 12 of the Diamondbacks 14 runs coming via the homer O'Brien with a three run blast Goldie with a two run homer today and seven solo shots. As Monty Tomas who homered twice last night rolls the first pitch to third for Michael Franco one down. Tomas 0 for 4. Pitcher spot is due up and Zach Greinke is coming up. Zach Greinke has pitched seven innings of one run ball today. So that means in his last 30 innings of work he has given up only three runs. Ground first base side for Ryan Howard. Two outs. 
If fans get to any game this season with the D backs value pack the value pack includes a lower level bleacher ticket a subway sandwich and a Pepsi all for just twenty five dollars. It's available for every game visit D backs dot com slash value. Nick Ahmed three for three today a lot of D back fans here with us. Nick has single twice in a homer the home run is fourth of the year a solo shot tied the game one one in the fifth. Three batters later Goldie followed with a two run homer. And then Jake Lamb a solo shot in the seventh made it four one. Mentioned this oddity coming into this series. The Phillies had only scored 11 runs in the first inning of their games, the fewest in the National League, and all three runs they've scored in this series have come in the first inning. That one is a foul ball. He just missed his fourth hit. Yeah, Phillies got two in the first last night. They were ahead 2 0 after one inning. Cameron Rupp just missed a home run, had that triple go off the plexiglass out there. The one piece of Foot long plexiglass in right field. And instead, it was a two run triple, it hits it six inches either side. It's a three run homer. Two and two to Nick. Struck him out. Gonzalez, a one, two, three, eight. Bottom eight coming up. Diamondbacks have a four one lead in Philadelphia. Lead the Phillies 4 1. Fox Sports Supports is proud to team up with Positive Coaching Alliance and its mission to develop better athletes, better people by working to provide all youth and high school athletes a positive, character building sports experience. Visit foxsportsupports.com. That's where you can learn more. Freddie Galvis leads off the eighth inning against Zach Rinke. Trying to bunt for a base hit, pops it up. Segura gets it on the fly. One down. Well, even when guys try to bunt against Zach Greg, hits a one pitch at bat. Gene Segura coming in like a streak to catch that one before it gets to the ground. Cesar Hernandez, who had a rough night at second base last night. 
will bat the pitcher spot with one down in the eight, 250, and two homers. He was one for three with a single last night. This one is lifted foul ground a lot of room out there and Jake Lamb can't quite make the underhand over the back catch. Now you mentioned the foul ground here in Citizens Bank Park uh, which is kind of unusual in the game now most yeah. ballparks they've moved the stands out closer to the field you don't have as much room to roam in foul ground and Jake had a little bit more room than he realized that time. It's unusual to have that much foul ground in what's considered a great hitter's park. Granky ahead 0 and 2. Well, Zach about to throw pitch number 90 in the ball game. There is no one warming up in the Diamondback bullpen. All quiet out there. He missed with that fastball, and it's two and two on Cesar Hernandez. Yeah, nobody had even been off the bench out there in the Diamondbacks bullpen until those two hits in the seventh inning. And guys just got up and started to move around a little bit. And Zach struck out Franco and got Ruiz to fly out to center, and they all sat back down. He strikes out Hernandez. Six strikeouts for Granke, two down. Hey, D back season ticket holders, you have experience credits. Redeem your credits for free parking, on field batting practice viewing, seat upgrades, autograph items, and much more. Redeem your credits and learn more about being a season ticket holder at dbacks.com slash advantage. Cody Ashey moved into the leadoff spot after a sluggish night offensively last night for the whole Phillies ball club. 0 for 3. Ashy doubled and scored a run last night. He's one for seven in the series so far. This is a guy who was injured to start the year, missed their first 50 games or so with a right oblique. Didn't make it back until June 2nd. D backs have the shift on. Granky ahead 0 and 2. Stays fair for Goldie. And Granky works a quick one, two, three, eighth inning. Ninth inning coming up, it's 4 1 D backs.
Our Healer River game summary. Zach Greinke has spun another beauty here. D-backs lead it 4-1. Three more homers today. Nick Ahmed and Jake Lamb solo shots. Goldie a two-run homer. That's been all the scoring. They've out hit the Diamond. Uh, the Phillies 10-3, and they lead it 4-1. New pitcher to work the ninth. The left-hander Brett Oberholzer coming out of the Phillies bullpen. His 16th appearance of the year. Nine home runs in 32 and two thirds innings pitched. He also walks quite a few batters. Gene Segura, two singles and a walk, leads it off. Zach Greinke has 15 career complete games. He has one this year that was shut out earlier this season. Pitch count is in very good shape, all things considered. There is some action of the Diamondback bullpen. Daniel Hudson and Brad Ziegler both warming up. So we'll see if Zach comes out for the ninth or not. Maybe enough's been enough already. Need to get some other guys some work. Segura strikes out. We shall see. Oh. One down for Michael Bourne, who's 0 for 4. If you're just joining us, no David Peralta in the lineup today. David yesterday showed up at the ballpark with a sore back, and Chip Hale said it came from sleeping in too late on the off day Thursday. It's not serious, but it flared up a bit. So David did not play yesterday, not play today. He could be used in an emergency today, Chip told us, but hopefully he'll be back tomorrow. It's nothing serious, they believe, two or three days at most. You ever have a bad back from sleeping too much? Yeah, we kind of joked about it earlier this year, traveling around, staying at hotels every three days, moving to a different bed with different pillows. It's not uncommon for guys to wake up in the morning and feel like somebody's been jumping on your back all night long. And every once in a while, you just shut it down, you wake up, and you've been sleeping for 12 hours along the way on the road, and it catches up to you. As Bonnie Tomas had a pillow issue. Earlier this year, when he had a sore neck. Well, two strikeouts for Oberholzer. And Goldie's coming up. He's one for four, a home run in the fifth inning, a two run shot, his 14th of the year. So Goldie has extended the hitting streak. It's now at 12 games. Visibility a little bit of an issue right now. The shadow of the light tower is cast right across home plate and a little bit out in front. You're going to lose that ball the last eight or ten feet. Well, it's worked for Oberholzer so far. Base hit for Goldie. A two out single is second hit today. A chance for Jake Lamb who has a couple of hits including a home run his last time up. This was Lamb with one out in the seventh. Line drive on a slider down and in. I thought it was interesting last night. Jake Lamb against the left. He had two hits and a walk. He was on base four times last night, on base three times today. And they just have a knack for homering in the same game five times this year. Goldie is all hung up. And once again, this Phillies infield absolutely butchers and gives away a sure out. Now goalie will be credited with the stolen base. You know, I've been watching Ryan Howard between innings throwing the ball around and he really has no arm left at this point. That was like a 
Got a 70 foot sinker right there to second base. Alvis couldn't hang on. I mean, there aren't many first basemen in the game that really throw well. Usually they're okay, average mm -hmm. at best. And Howard uh, doesn't even have an average at best anymore. Missed inside, 1 0 on Jake Lamb. You can barely see Jake in that shadow. I mean that shot right there looks like he's doing a 60 minutes interview where they sort of black out the face. The whistleblower. One and two on Lamb. Phillies in the bottom of the ninth will have Herrera, Blanco, and Howard. Two, three, and four do up. Daniel Hudson and Brad Ziegler both standing by in the bullpen. Fly ball along the left field line for Cody Ashey. He's got it just shy of the railing. So we go to the home half of the ninth inning. Diamondbacks have a 4 1 lead. In Philadelphia, where the Diamondbacks are trying to make it two in a row over the Phillies. They lead it 4 1, sent for the bottom of the ninth inning, and your Arizona Federal Credit Union pitching change. It's the closer, Brad Ziegler, 13 saves in 26 appearances this year, an ERA of 293. Brad has converted a D backs record 41 straight save opportunities. Dating back to last year, he got the final five outs, and Monday's went over the Dodgers. Averaging right at four and a half ground ball outs for every fly ball out. And he'll try and lock it down for Zach Greinke who was brilliant again today. One run on three hits in eight innings a walk and six strikeouts. Zach threw 94 pitches 68 strikes. It's two, three, and four in the Philly ninth. Odubel Herrera, Andres Blanco, and Ryan Howard do up. Herrera has.
has driven in the Phillies only run a solo homer back in the first inning. His seventh this year. Strike one. Well, we didn't quite make it with our trading places theme today. Eikhoff's ERA went from 340 up to 349. Zach Greinke's went from 375 down to 354. So it came close. Winthorpe and Valentine. <laughs> Very nicely done. Valley Honda dealers. Key to the game. Hillary Valentine. Capricorn. Capricorn. <laughs> 0 oh 2 on Odubel Herrera. And Brad Ziegler makes short work of the leadoff man in the ninth. Visibility no better for the Phillies here in this inning with that shadow out in front of home plate, and Herrera looked like he didn't see that pitch at all. Andres Blanco singled his last time up. He's one for three. Hey. D backs live post game show follows our ball game. Todd Walsh will have reaction from the clubhouse. Hey. Well, broken bat flare, and it's going to drop over the head of Ahmed in front of O'Brien. A one out single for Blanco, who's two for four. That'll bring up Ryan Howard. Howard today 0 for 3. Well, if you're trying to get a double play ball, this is the man you want running to first. He's had Achilles problems, knee problems. Now 36 years old, Ryan Howard. Missed off the plate, 1 0. Howard, two hits in 22 at bats this month, but both the hits are home runs. Shift is on for the Diamondbacks. 2 and 0. A tapper that stays fair. Goldie tags the bag. That takes the force off. Ahmed gets the tag down on Blanco. Ziegler gets the double play. And the Diamondbacks get the win. 4 1 year final. They've taken the first two games of this four game set in Philadelphia. And once again, they do it via the home run. Three of them leading to four runs. Really good to see the D backs offense bust out regardless of the opposition. You got to play the games on the schedule. Take advantage when you can. The Diamondbacks have really lit up this Phillies pitching staff. And Zach Granke dominant once again for the D-backs. Granke has now won seven consecutive starts. He is 10 and three. Save number 14 for Brad Ziegler in two hours and 37 minutes. D-backs out hit the Phillies 11 of four. They win it 4-1. We'll take a break. Diamondback live post game show presented by CenturyLink is next from Citizens Bank Park. D-backs win it 4-1. Back with more from Philly after this.